Okay, today we're going to talk about bringing your station to the 21st century and interfacing your rig with your computer. So first you're going to need some kind of digital interface. Uh, these are the three most popular, your SignalLink, your Rig Blaster, or your MicroHAM product. Uh, these can be found, I listed the stores where you can get them. Uh, what I'm going to use is a MicroHAM keyer, and here are the cables uh, that were included along with what I had to purchase specific to my radio. Um, now you're also going to need to download uh, three things. I'm going to have you download Dimensions 4, MicroHAM, and N1MM. So first off, let's go in and let's do, do the uh, downloads for all three software. N1MM is great. It's free. It's a great contesting uh, software. You can use it for field day. You can also put it in DX uh, mode, open up a DX log. I'm going to show you how to do that and just use it for DXing. Now it's really not a good logging software because you can't uh, confirm uh, if you sent them QSL cards or when they come back, things like that, but it will uh, let you export them as an ADIF file, which you can import into a logging software or put on your QRZ logging software, anything like that. Um, so here we go and we're going to just download all these software products. So just go in and click this and that's where you're going to click for your uh, microham interface. Now once they're fully downloaded, you need to go into your download folder and install them. So we'll go ahead and install them. Now this Dimensions 4 is a time syncing software. Make sure your computer is synced to the correct clock, especially if you're going to FT8 or contest. You want to make sure your computer is on the right time. Now this is, and you know, you're just going to have to answer through the things. It's pretty simple. Um, It's going to make you restart, turn off your computer, restart, and turn it on. Obviously, I couldn't record while my computer's restarting. So. so we're installing the USB router software right now. It's going to ask you to unplug all your USB cables from the microham, and that's because it's going to create virtual uh, serial ports. So you don't want to have any of your USB cables connected. But as soon as you're done installing, make sure you connect that again. Otherwise, nothing will come up when you uh, bring up the icon. Um, these go pretty fast and uh, it, it should be fairly easy and uh, self-explanatory. All right, so let's bring up now the MicroHAM interface. Now you're going to make, make sure your cables are all plugged in and this is what you get when you bring it up. So you're going to go in and you're going to set up uh, some virtual ports. So I'm going to set up four virtual ports because I have a, a two VFO radio. So I just set up one, two, three, and four. And once that's done, then you're going to go in and uh, once that circle's done, you're going to go in and choose uh, one of the ports. Now, it doesn't matter what port you name it as long as you stay consistent. We're putting the radio on port 1. So when we go into N1MM, we want to make sure we use 1 for the radio there as well. Uh, same thing with the uh, address. The 8 echo is what I'm using because it's an ICOM. I pick my radio. Uh, and it gave me the 8 echo for the address. You want to make sure that's the same in both places. See there, I got to change it to an 8 echo. And um, now if you go back, um, it's actually going to be interfacing. I'm going to put on the extra ports for if I want to do uh, RIDI. Uh, you can do CW. It'll send CW for you from your computer, things like that, uh, using the win key function. So I'm going to set all that up as well. So that's why I'm using four ports. And uh, now we'll bring up N1MM and we're going to create a new database. It's our first time in here and it's going to tell you all this other stuff, but just punch through it and then um, name your new database, it's tell you have to set up your station and all that. So it's going to ask you to name the database. I'm just going to call it new DB, but you can put your call sign in or things like that, whatever you want to name it. <clears throat> And uh, then we're going to put in our station information. So just type in all your information. Now, if you ever do a contest and you uh, generate a Cabrillo file, uh, this is what's going to be in the top. So this is how it's going to read to the contest robots. Uh, so you want to fill that in and put your contest club and, and put in your CQ zone, your ITU zone, your uh, six digit uh, grid square. Um, so just fill all that in. 
I was going to speed this up, but Jerry says I usually do all this stuff double the speed of a normal person anyway, so I didn't bother speeding it up for you. <laughs> so uh, I can do this stuff in my sleep. I do all this stuff a lot. All right. So now we're going to configure uh, the radio on N1MM. So we're going to choose port 1, go pick our radio. I'm using the 7851, but pretty much every radio is in there. Hit the set button, and it's going to help you through. This is, uh, it'll tell you for your radio what's normal. Like when I mouse over uh, that last field there, see it says 2 is for most other radios, ICOMs are a 1. Um, and then again, you got to make sure you have that 8 echo in there for your address. So what's most important is everything matches. So if it's, you know, port 1 on the micro key here, it's got to be port 1 on N1MM. So we're going to go ahead and set up those other ones. For digital, um, I've tuned my DTS and my RTS to, un to uh, I'm not doing the update, sorry. We'll do it later. And uh, this is going to be for radio 1. Now I'm going to make sure I have SO2V checked. And then uh, we'll do for radio 2. And same thing with off and off. And then radio 2, because I have two VFOs coming in on my radio. And then I'm going to set up the other one for the wind key, so you can uh, do CW right from your computer. It's really nice. You don't have to have your paddle all the time. And that one's an on and an off, and then that's for both radios, both VFOs, I should say, not radios. And uh, that's good with your configure, and uh, we should be good to go. Uh, next, though, we want to, uh, it's going to open up my second VFO. Sorry, guys. Okay. Um, it's there if in case I need my second VFO because I could have two band plans up, have one of my VFOs on 40 meters and one on 20 meters. It's kind of nice when I have, now you bring up this band plan. This is sweet. This is the sweetest part of interfacing, okay? Um, now the radio is talking to the computer through via the microham keyer. So now if I pull up uh, my telnet, <clears throat> this is going to pull up uh, the cluster. Now you can go in and set this up and pick uh, any of the clusters that they have already listed there. You'll see this huge amount of clusters listed. But if you don't like those, and maybe you guys have a local cluster that you guys use, you can go ahead and put in uh, that local cluster. Make sure you put in the IP address, and then it will be in that drop-down list for you to choose. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and pick one of the ones that they have here already. And then I'm going to click for automatic login. So as soon as I bring up my N1MM, it automatically uh, brings me into the cluster. And what's nice about that, all those spots that people are spotting all over the world are going to show up on my band map all the way to the left there. So you'll see them start to roll in. It'll take a little while here, but you know, there goes the spot. So when I go over to my band map and I hit show DX, um, it'll show my DX. Now all you have to do is spin your wheel on your mouse to condense what you see or expand what you see. So you see all those spots right there. Um, those are all spots I can work. Um, and um, we're going to open up a log here. So let's just open up a DX log and then I'll just do all my DXing right from here. And so you'll know what you need if you have your whole log in here. If you need something, it'll be red. Uh, if, if it's not a new country, but you never worked the guy before, it'll be blue. Uh, but if it's red, that's a brand new country for you, as long as your full log is in this in this log. So um, it's kind of nice. Now, right from here in that box, I could type in um, sideband, I could, and it'll go to sideband. CW, it'll automatically switch to CW, just right in that uh, box where you put in the call sign. So I could type in RIDI, I could type in a frequency, it'll change frequency or band. Um, and then you can just go with your mouse and click on any of those call signs. Um, and then you can just click on that call sign. It puts it in the box for you. It's really easy. You can just keep clicking your mouse and working all those guys. Or you can hit the control up or down arrow on your keyboard. And it'll just move up and down to unworked spots for you. Unworked uh, 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 stations. Um, so it's really nice once you're interface and that's just some of the cool stuff that you can do now that you're online in the 21st century and hooked up so let's get our clock up and rolling too we forgot to do that so let me get her up and uh, this is great I use this for every contest I use this when I FT8 um, because there it's really important that you have good times same thing if you're doing a satellite or anything like that where you have to have exact times you just pull it up hit that sync button 
and you're synced. Uh, you're synced to what everybody else is synced to. So um, those are the three really cool tools to have up and rolling for you to be interfaced uh, with your radio. So good luck and I am going to put this video out on my YouTube channel uh, so if you want to slow it down, rewind, whatever, you'll be able to do that.